How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Yes, I'm here today, Friday, here on the program. And we got a lot to talk about here today, don't we? Oh, man, do we ever. Well, the PG year of Raw, I got to sneeze. Mm, what a start. I should have had Simper Vivi do the show today. Oh, I just cursed from the opening bell. A PG year of WWE Raw may be coming to an end, we wrote yesterday, or we explained to you yesterday. Now, it may not be coming to an end. So we're going to tell you what's going on. Because, in fact, there is a... Uh, there is a lot to talk about with this story. And a lot of people have already made up their minds about this story. But uh, I'll tell you why you should never do that. But anyway, we'll say about Raw, TV14, TVPG, etc., the latest as of today. I also got notes on Cody Rhodes and his pec surgery, Adam Cole and his not labrum surgery. We've got a new NXT gimmick where they actually released the names of the talent prior to the talent actually getting their new gimmick, unless there's a change. And sometimes there are changes, but uh, we'll get into that. Fighter Fest, night one. Uh, we got the ratings for Dynamite on Wednesday, which did pretty well, and uh, more. We also have a lot of guests coming on the program today. Keith Lipinski is going to join us in the final segment of the show. Got a lot to talk about with him. Dave Meltzer in the second segment of the show. Newest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter is available on the front page of WrestlingObserver.com right now. Everything you ever wanted to know about everything that happened this past week. 35,000 words of of news and entertainment in the New Observer. So we'll talk today about the top stories. And you can join us today as well. 425-780-7566 is the text message line. 425-780-7566. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. May I have a moment here for a quick speech? Sure. Hey, listen. If you're listening to this show or you go online to get the wrestling news and you follow the business and et cetera, et cetera, you have, uh, you have two choices here, okay? You can either be willing to learn from anybody... Or you can create your own reality, okay? Which is, is usually not right. I mean, if you enjoy living in an alternate reality from the rest of the world, you're welcome to do that. But if you actually want to know what's going on, you can, you can learn from anybody or you can create your own reality. So this is not a new thing. Everyone always talks about social media. And this has been going on for, you know, probably a million years or however long there have been people. But you hear about it now because of social media. So, some people don't like Andrew Zarian, okay? Some people don't like me. I know that's impossible to believe, but it's true. Some people don't like me. Some people don't like Dave. Some people don't like Jim Cornette. Some people don't like Vince Russo. Do I need to go on? I think everyone doesn't like Kevin Dunn. That's pretty much a universal. But the point is, so, if you don't like Andrew, that's fine, okay? But... Andrew did not screw up this TV, PG, TV 14 story at all, okay? What happened was, yesterday, there was a memo sent out that stated that this Monday, Raw was going to TV 14, okay? This is 100%. I saw this memo. Andrew saw this memo. I believe Sean Ross Sapp also saw this memo. I, I think Dave saw the memo. This memo absolutely, positively, it, it, it was sent out. There were discussions about Raw internally, both at the network and in WWE, about the show moving to TV 14 on Monday. I heard from people that overheard Kevin Dunn talking about it. it, it, it 100%. Absolutely. Okay. Then, and I'm not, I, I have an idea why, because I was kind of given the impression that because it it got out, because it broke or whatever, they they rescinded it. But there was then another memo that was sent out that said to disregard the first memo. I saw this memo as well. I believe that Sean Ross Sapp and Andrew, Z I believe everyone also saw this memo. This memo 100% went out. 
So why? The question is not, you know, why? Blah, blah, blah. The question is, why did it get rescinded? And I don't know. I kind of had the impression that it got rescinded because it got out. And as of yesterday, the word was that it's not 100% that they're not going to TV 14. It does not appear they're going to TV 14 Monday. But by the end of today, maybe they will be going TV 14 Monday. There is a push from the USA Network to go to TV 14. Now, when you talk about TV PG and TV 14, one of the reasons you choose to be TV PG instead of TV 14 is for the advertisers. So it doesn't matter if WWE wants to go TV 14. It honestly doesn't even really matter if USA wants to go TV 14. If the advertisers push back against TV 14, you can't go TV 14. USA would like to go TV 14. I don't think WWE... I mean, I, actually, I, I know that WWE would as well for, for reasons that are not the reasons that you think. But they would like to go TV 14 as well. But it's not a guarantee that they will be able to go TV 14. But as of yesterday, the idea was it's probably going to happen, but it's probably not going to happen Monday. And that's the story. It's not even a story about, well, it's better to be, it's better to be right than first. I did hear... I won't throw anybody under the bus. But I did hear that one. That's not what this is, okay? This absolutely was happening. And then they changed their mind. So, you know, I could wait until everyone else reports that, and then I wouldn't be first, but I'd be right. Or I can just be right and tell you that that's what happened. So, yes, you know, if you don't like somebody, you can decide that they had to have screwed up and been wrong. But sometimes, and this goes for everybody, sometimes someone that you don't like is right. I like Andrew, by the way. He's a good I do guy. too, and USA was a number one rated cable television network for fifteen years, decade and a half, fourteen years, fifteen years, long time. They are now struggling over the last several years to stay in contention of the top five, with all the Turners and the Discoveries, and you take HGTV, and you take the Food Network, and you take Hallmark. Forget about what Univision is taking on a network scale in many places. USA absolutely would like to go TV 14. You need to dot I's. You need to cross T's. There are memos that get leaked. This was one of the memos. I know of one. Everybody else is saying what Brian said. They know of two. I think that's kind of that. And... Are you, is everybody going to be right on every story? No, it happens. You get worked on a story. You have a source screw up a story. You have things that happen. Even if you try to two-source it in wrestling, it's really tough to find two separate individual sources to do things. But this is something that multiple sources had. Yeah, and may I, so, may I jump in? He was yes, right. Sir. That's the point I'm trying to make. He was right. Yes. Okay? If, if uh, uh, I'll give you an example. Well, anything. If, if. Like this past Sunday, when I when I went down the lineup for Raw, there were three matches for Raw. I got them all off WWE.com. By Monday, they'd removed two of them from WWE.com, and there was only one. That doesn't mean I was wrong on Sunday. I was right. What happened was they decided not. They stopped billing two of those matches. So this is not an example of them being wrong. It absolutely one hundred percent happened, and then they changed it. So he was right. Is that that? Yes. That's that. <laughs> That's that. Let's keep it moving. It's going to be happy when they do move TV 14. Then whatever's going to say. They want to see Otis in a bikini. I think somebody said it in one it of the... It ain't going to be Otis in a bikini. <laughs> Why? He already yacked Bro, on... Bro, you can uh, do Otis in a was bikini. Was that PG? Him yacking? Yeah. Is that the, the setup for he this? He can barf on TV at TV PG. That's true. You can't do that on television. You get the green slime pouring down, so the barf is okay. That is, uh, that is just childish in the, the way that Vince McMahon thinks about things. That's why the most remembered scene from Hulk Hogan in No Holds Barred is, what's that smell? It smells like dookie. So there you go. Dookie. What are you talking about, dude? I'm moving this show to TV. Uh, what's before MA? PG? No. Can I? Oh, uh, wait. Kids? What's the kid one? TVY. T oh, d why in that? Wait. For youth. That TV Y. Goes TV Y, then TV PG, then TV 14. You then... say the F word every other No, I now. don't. No, I don't. Don't start rumors, Mike. Because that's an example of you being 
Wrong. Hey, did you know Cody Rhodes revealed he almost hemorrhaged during surgery to repair his torn pec? Oh, come on. It looked like he was hemorrhaging the whole time. <laughs> did he really? Did, did he really? What did he say? I haven't heard the story yet. I was, he almost hemorrhaged? I was told last time I was there for my big checkup after PT. They are not going to give me a timeline just yet for when I'm going to be back because they're afraid if they give me that timeline, I'm going to try to jump it by maybe a month or two. They know this, Cody. I don't think people know I almost hemorrhaged in the surgery because there was so much blood. People have seen the picture of it in the match, per se, so it was pretty gnarly. He revealed that WWE had been filming a documentary on his return. I hope they didn't film the surgery with all the blood. I bet you they did. Since the WrestleMania, WWE has been doing a documentary on me, potentially for Peacock. I'm positive somebody's about to text me and be like, oh, don't tell them. But either way, they're going to do this documentary. And then he said, quote, my titty exploded, and the documentary changed greatly. <laughs> hey, you know what? Hey, equality. How many times have we heard about a titty exploding? I don't know if we can say that, FCC. How many times have you heard about an implant or a breast exploding from one of the women? So it might as well have a, the equality across the board. Cody is here for you, folks. He's ended sorts such things as racism. He's ended a lot of things. And you know what? Everybody on the main field now, if you're going to blow a titty, I am too. Congratulations, Cody Rhodes. He is one of the best workers of this era. I am becoming more and more convinced. Has nothing to do with in, him inside the ring. That dude knows where he is at all times right now. Back in a moment with Dave, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Dave Meltzer joining us. Newest edition of The Observer, front page of WrestlingObserver.com. You can head up there. As a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com, you can read the new Observer. You can read about 2,000 back issues of the Observer in the archives, dating back to 1992. You can listen to every single one of our podcasts, dating back to 2005. 13,000 shows. That's a lot of shows. And the new Observer, Dave, is headlined by more on this Vince McMahon story. And uh, I had a question unrelated to the issue. There's a new article about uh, this in Variety today, correct? Yes, I read the article, yeah. Why in the world a... is every article dropping on a Friday? It's like the worst day to gain any traction. Um, I don't really have a good answer for that, other than, um, uh, you know, in the in the mainstream media, they actually, Friday's actually considered a good day to drop an article. Mm. So, so that's why. But uh, there really wasn't, the Variety article really didn't have much in it, you know, I mean, as far as, it's an article in a major you know, media publication. So the fact that it's there was, uh, you know, was was interesting because it gives the story legs. But there wasn't like any what I would call new information broken in the article either. Dave, um, a lot of people have been surprised, including the journal authors themselves, that there has not been a little bit more groundswell after that second article. A lot of people are taking the Silence from other media sources as they may not care about it, but sometimes sources like to work things out for themselves and Variety obviously reporting on it. They didn't do any really new reporting, but has there been anyone to your knowledge that is working on a story that you could say maybe has contacted you or do you have any idea if there's any feelers out there from anybody else that's looking into this from any level, whether it be a business point of view or a personal McMahon point of view or anything like that? The only stuff I have done is a couple of radio shows, uh, you know, stemming from the second article. And um, I did an, uh, you know, an interview with Bloomberg. But, I mean, as far as uh, no, not really. And, you know, you, you would think I would be one of the key people you would go to. Um, so I would. So the, basically the answer is no. Hmm. So, uh, as noted, the first story got a lot of attention. Vince came out, acted like a weirdo on TV. Second story came out, lost a lot less traction. No Vince McMahon on television. And now, no, 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 no ratings. The first one had a, led to a big ratings boost for Raw and SmackDown that week. The second one led to nothing. I mean, I mean, I don't think that it hurt the ratings, but it certainly, you know, the numbers for both Raw and SmackDown were down. Although Raw was going to be down no matter what because it was coming off of. Uh, you know, well, actually, we're always up. I take that back because it's July fourth, but it was down from usual. So, what what do you? I mean, we've talked about this. You asked me on Sunday, like, what do you make of this? And I said, well, I'll 
I'll see what happens this week. And uh, literally nothing happened this week. So now I'm starting to feel more and more that there probably is nothing coming of this. But I guess we do have to wait oh, no, no, the no, investigation no, 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 no. I, I mean, is, is I mean no, I, There may be nothing coming of this. Well, I mean, the reporters from the Wall Street Journal said they're still going to be working on stuff. But, but, I mean, as far as something actually coming from this, nothing is going to come of this unless something, somebody, you know, really damaging comes forward or the investigation comes in and the investigation reveals something that, uh, you know, he won't be able to survive. But the investigation will come in at some point. And at that point, uh, you know, whatever it reveals is going to be the end of the story. And either probably what will end up is he'll either be back as CEO or he'll be out. I don't think there's going to be a middle ground. We got uh, the G1 starting tonight, I believe, actually. Um, a middle of the night tonight, middle yeah. Middle of the night tonight. And uh, I guess, you know, you, you, this is not your favorite G1 in terms of, of the lineup and the way that it's structured with everyone only having six oh, no, matches it, instead of nine. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, much, um, it's a much weaker tournament than, uh, you know, than, the, than any of the last 10 years probably as far as, um, you know, less, uh, less, less what I would call on paper super matches because there's, you know, they're spread up into four blocks, so and every block has a couple of weak links in it. So I think that the match quality is going to be way down. Um, as far as excitement level, I guess we'll see wh- you know how people are into four blocks instead of two. I mean that's that's uh, you know a, a, you know uncharted water, so to speak. New so- psychology for Jado too, because you can't have that situation here where somebody goes on a losing streak or a winning streak early because you only have those six block matches. So right. it's going to really change up how he does everything. Right, because we've we've had those years where a guy will lose like two matches right away, or sometimes even three matches right away, and then do the big comeback at the end. Or you'll have the guy start out with six big wins in a row. And then, you know, doesn't win the block because they start losing at the end. And you really only have probably one match giveaway to do this. So, like, say, like, Jay White, let's say he loses, if he loses his first match, um, but you want him to come back to win, and I'm just throwing out a name, uh, he pretty much has to win. I mean, I don't, I don't think you can, uh, with six matches, I think that maybe you'll have a block where four and two, if it's with, with the right four and two can win. But, uh, boy, you, you know, I mean, literally... You know, if you, you, you two losses is the most you can have, and that's it. Now, oftentimes, not always, if it is your first ever G one, you do a lot of losing. But uh, 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 often, yes, yes. Filthy Tom is the uh, he was the open weight champion for over a year. They pushed him super strong on uh, New Japan strong, and uh, a lot of people have been looking at his block. And you know, some people have said, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he lost every match, but beat Okada. But then, of course, you, I don't know about that one. Yeah, you'd you'd be setting up a title match with a guy who actually lost every other match in the block. So I don't see that happening. No, but no, uh, no how, they're not going to they're not going to give a title match to a guy who goes one in five in G one. Yes, how how do you think that uh, that he will do for his his first time? You know, it's hard to say. I think he's just going to be. I don't think. You know, okay, I'm going to go two or three wins would be my prediction. Okay. Now, also, we got uh, SummerSlam coming up as well. We're about uh, a couple of weeks away, in fact. They have uh, passed 30,000, but uh, well below what they did last year. Yes. Uh, but still, they are at 30,000, which is pretty good for SummerSlam. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts and what is, what kind of, uh, like, what's your feeling as to how this show is going to do? Because Money in the Bank apparently uh, did, there was more interest than at least I figured there would be. Um,. Yeah, I mean, I get, I guess, uh, I, I actually should look that up actually today as far as like the interest level of everything. But um, SummerSlam, I mean, the interest level will be high because of the name SummerSlam and because of the idea, whether this ends up being true or not, that this is the finale, finale of Reigns and Lesnar, who are the two biggest stars of the current era. Um, you know that. So, so in a, in a sense, this blow off should be huge. I don't think it's going to be as 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 huge as. It would have been in another era by any means, but I do think it's for this era. I think it's going to be fairly big. Um, the thing that's interesting is, I think the late August is better than late July for a date, but I guess we'll see. I just it's just that my feeling is because I know that like with TV and everything, people start getting like back to the norm by the end of the summer. But July thirtieth, you're in the middle of the summer, so that's a low. You know, that's when people are watching the least. 
Well, I, I kind of also feel that uh, I like August better. I think that the middle of August would be good. I think if you get to late August, I think a lot of people, if they have kids, or they're doing that one last big summer trip before the kids go back to school. So I don't think like the last week of August would necessarily be the, the best time to do it. I think mid-August would be all right. But uh, the thing with the the, the Reigns Lesnar they're, 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 match... They're, all, they're also head-to-head they're also head with UFC, which is not... Um, I mean, it's not a kiss of death because they're not on pay-per-view, but if they were still doing a pay-per-view model, going head-to-head with UFC would be absolutely stupid. I also think in terms of, of interest in the main event, I mean, I know they're billing it as a blow-off and everything like that, but I think if you did a poll, I don't think you'd find one person who would say, I believe these two men will never wrestle again on a on a big show. Yeah. I, I can't, I, 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 unless I, some, something tragic occurred, like, they're obviously going to have another match. Well, I mean, like, look, it's WWE and stipulations. I mean, the rule is, is that you don't take it seriously. Because it, because they don't take it seriously. You know, another thing that you talk about in uh, many of the Observer issues, actually, is a lot of people, when they see these numbers, whether it be Raw, Dynamite, Rampage, a lot of talk about, man, you know, pro wrestling. These numbers used to be so big, and now what's happening? It's a different world. Yeah, it is. And uh, how, like, you know, how it's are like, it's all like... of the shows doing in terms of the cable charts? Well... Um, Cause really, it's doing well. Every uh, NXT is is usually between uh, nine and twenty two in its time slot. Um, uh, Rampage is, is sometimes one, often two or three. Well, the worst I think has been about five. Uh, Dynamite is usually one or two. Raw will be number one. It won't be number one this week because home run derby, but Raw will be number one all through the summer until football season starts, and then it will probably be number two all through football season. So, yeah, I mean, it's um, wrestling's doing really, really well on cable. Um, when you look at those lower numbers compared to 10 years ago or 20 years ago, it's it's everything is like that. So it's not really, you know, when people do that thing, it's very disingenuous. People watch in different ways. I mean, the things that you should look at is... You know, like, uh, you know, how many people are going to the matches? That's a really good barometer to tell you how much interest there is. And with WWE, it's low end of usual. And with AEW, for a secondary promotion, it's kind of phenomenal, even though uh, WWE's ahead of AEW. You know, so it's like wrestling's doing fine, and there's indies all over the place. I mean, the number the number of shows on any given Friday or Saturday is ridiculously high. Um I mean, there's certainly people with agendas that want to prove somehow that, like, by TV ratings that wrestling's dead. But if you use that, baseball's dead, and it's not dead. Basketball's dead, and it's not dead. You know what I mean? Every 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 genre is dead based on the way people will say wrestling is dead. All right. All these things are alive. Yep, we have to head out. I want to thank you so much for doing the show today. Back in a moment with more, everybody. Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sembravivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. I set up a very special guest today. Dr. Keith Lipinski is joining us. Mike doesn't know what's going on, but I'll fill him in as the show goes on because we got a lot to talk about here today, don't we, Dr. Keith? We always do. Hey, Brian. Hey, Mike. Uh, great to be on talking to you from my spacious WCW themed bathroom. So do you actually have a WCW-themed bathroom? And if so, I, it's, why? This, is, this isn't a Zoom background, baby. This this is real. Like, well, this, I, yeah, this I, is an authentic Great American Bash 1991 poster. This is a Where the Big Boys Play flag that I got from Stash Pages, which, yes, I realized where the big boys play in a, in a bathroom is not a good thing. This behind me, this isn't a gimmick. This is an actual shower. Yes, Did you I, get divorced? I, uh, I can tell by the audio this has definitely been being uh, recorded in a bathroom, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, listen, I I, uh, I don't know your wife, but uh, I remember when you guys got married. You've been on this show since 2005, 2006. There's no way she's letting you keep that stuff up there all the time. You had you oh, put absolutely. it up for the show. She never uses this. She, this, this she is, doesn't this bathe? Is, this, is, this, is, this is the downstairs bathroom. Like This is like where uh, I use it, my son uses it, and that's it. I like, see. Considering my son uses it, maybe I should cover up some of this, this uh, Melinda Hyatt stuff. But no, uh, she's all about this. Like she realizes how much joy I have. Like she decorates every room in the house. I have two rooms. I have this bathroom, which is WCW based and also a little ECW and a world class. Uh, and then upstairs in my office, it's an all Japan based uh, from the 1990s. So I those have- are my two rooms. I get to do whatever I want with them. She gets the rest of their spacious estate. 
I got to be honest, I'm for this because most men are reduced to one room. They have one man cave, one office, one den, something like that. You are actually expanding out into the bathroom. This may be a good thing. You may be able to get up the steps and maybe able to get a little bit of hallway out of that deal. Oh, I, I, I could potentially get more hallway if I want to. But isn't that the goal of any man, Mike, really, when you think about it? so. Keith, can I, I ask you a question, a serious question? Of course. Why do you like WCW? WCW to me was in in the early 90s. To me, it seemed so much more realistic and so much more fun than WWE was. Like when I grew up as a wrestling fan, like Hogan and those bigger than life characters were fun, but like Ric Flair seemed more legitimate. Sting seemed a lot more fun than Ultimate Warrior who kept on talking to his hands. So to me, WCW always was my favorite promotion sort of growing up. And even though someone wrote a tremendous book of uh, the death of WCW, it's still, I have a real soft spot in my heart for WCW. Recently, one of my rewatching projects has been watching all the Super Brawls, and it's been uh, quite enjoyable until I hit like 1995 and 1996. So, so, so I, we're, I, talking, I, we're talking you're mostly a fan of, of a pre-98 World Championship. Well, yeah, absolutely. I, I think that okay. goes without saying, but I can enjoy the 99 stuff on a different level because I hate, I love torturing myself with what I'm watching or nice. sitting there and just enjoying the sort of myopia of everything that went down after that. So in the Russo nice. era, like I, I've done several Russo era rewatches and I'm still sane. So that's, still, but of course now I have a bathroom dedicated. I was going to say, you got a bathroom with WCW so, posters all over. So I don't know if we should talk about your sanity. Uh, I think I'm still pretty good for a 47, 48-year-old. Well, that's true. That's true. Now, when you watch these old Super Brawls, I mean, do you do you get ideas for AAW? Oh, absolutely. All I'm doing is watching to rip stuff off. Okay. Right? For Especially for our AAW show live tonight on Fight TV. No, it, it's something where I... I, I, I like figure out stuff that hasn't been done in a while and I'll th- jot it down or I'll text somebody or I'll sit there and just steal commentary quotes and send them to Joe Dabrowski or Tyler Volts for our show tonight. Like it's those kind of things. Well, here's a question for you. You may not have a good answer, but uh, I'll put you on the spot. So uh, recently uh, Impact did a Slammiversary, whatever, an anniversary show, and they brought back the, the reverse Battle Royal, a match that no one had seen since 2006. And the reason was... Because it sucked. That's why nobody has repeated the reverse battle royal. So as you watch these old Super Brawls, or any show, what is the best idea that you have seen that nobody had done in a long time, but was actually a good idea? Because usually if it's a bad idea, you don't see it for a long time sometimes. But what's the best idea? You were like, my God, how come no one's done Battle Bowl, for example, since... Oh, no, no, Battle Bowl is terrible. Like, every once in a while, someone will suggest Battle Bowl, and they'll be like, no, no, that is a terrible, terrible, like, lethal or other lottery stink. There's been a lot of stuff where I've watched where I've been like, okay, this isn't a good idea. Uh, I was always a big fan of Polly dangerously being uh, Ricky Steen boats mysterious ninja and i really feel that if anything uh rest professional wrestling in 2022 especially independent professional wrestling needs more ninjas so potentially you know basically heel managers dressed up like ninjas is, is something where i think i would like to see that brought back in wrestling immediately i don't know if you're aware of this or not keith but uh our uh he's probably not either of our friends but ed in san antonio ran a show in vegas <laughs> and uh, it was an all all uh, ladies show and I decided, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hitch my wagon to this young superstar, Billy Starks, and I'm going to manage her here tonight. And, uh, you know, long story short, it, it didn't go as I'd planned, but I was very, very impressed with uh, Billy Starks. Then I find out she's, what, 17? She's a young and she's, she's actually debuting for us tonight in a four-way. How old is she? I believe she's of legal age, Brian. Well, I'm not asking like that, you creep. I'm just saying. Well, like, I'm, just, I'm telling you that way, you creep. Well, I, I'm, I just. I don't have her idea. She's like a year <laughs> older than Nick Wayne. Yes, well, I think and she, Nick she Wayne may looks kind of like a is. little kid, and uh, you know. So anyway. No RF jokes here, Summer Beatty. <laughs> and then she said, she she goes, I've been wrestling for like uh, I forget what she said, but it was like five years or something like that. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, you know. I don't know if she wants me to tell this story or not. I'll, I'll, I'll... So, you know, this is Ed running the show. Okay? <laughs> so he doesn't know what he's doing. 
And so we're sitting back there. It's like, well, when are we on? And, like, no one knows. And it's like, well, where's the line? Well, there's no lineup. There's not even a lineup for this show, okay? So, like, he's a nice guy and all, but, you know, we're about, I don't know, we're sitting around for about a half hour trying to figure out what's going on. And then, you know, I'm going to go down to do a promo, and it's like, do we got to tell the music? Has anyone told the music guy? No one's told the music guy. Okay, well, I guess I got to tell the music guy. And we're doing all this. And then was, I think she was, like, 17 or I don't know how old she was, but the point is she's super young in this business. And she just goes, Sometimes I hate this business. <laughs> and I thought, listen, I've been around a lot of, I've heard that many times. But usually, you know, they're in their 30s or 40s. I've never heard someone who's not, they can't even drive. I guess she can probably drive, but can't even drink. And they're already like sick of this business. This business she's, sucks. She's, but, but think about it this way. She's wise beyond, beyond her years. Oh, she's definitely wise beyond her years. The opposite she's, of Ed. What is that scene like? I mean, because we talk about Nick Wayne, and obviously we, you know, either Brian knows his father, or I re emailed us over the years, Keith, I'm sure Buddy did. So it's like he's in the business. But Billy Wayne, I know her, her, her father or stepfather. Billy Starks. Billy Starks, I'm sorry. Is, Billy is a Wayne, photographer. <laughs> is a photographer. But there seems to be a lot of people like coming out of the Midwest, whether it be Akira or Cole Radrick or Billy. There seems to be a lot of young talent working kind of all over the place or you know in, in yeah we've gone full circle back to the days of the territories it's nice it's nice there's a lot of really cool talent right now in the midwest and it's it's something where the midwest for a while had some good runs but it was something where we at aaw were able to have like the best independent stars around and the last three years have changed that dramatically so it's something where we've had to sit there and go with talents that are more a little bit more local or within the midwest guys like mr ren jones guys like russ jones i hate the fact that two guys have the same last name but i understand now why vince hates it as well like there's a lot of really great talent out there right now we're going to really expose a lot of them tonight on fight tv during our independence day can i uh, at some point interview big beef gnarls garvin oh you should he's fantastic like he really has gone over proof that chicago indeed loves beef but yeah, no, he's great, amazing talent. The matches that he's had in AEW with Fred Yehi and the one he recently had uh, with uh, Mike Bennett, which is now available on our on-demand site and also on the High Spots Network, uh, is definitely worth checking out. Like he, he is really someone that's gotten over with the crowd. Keith, talk a little bit about how people can see you more because I remember, we, I mean, we talked about it a lot. You know, there was going to be constriction and a lot of things changing during the pandemic and obviously the rise of AEW. And I know it's a, it's it's an extra thing for you in Chicago because they're always there. But how can people see not only this show, which is on Fight TV, all your live events, but how can they go back if they do like something and check out some of the things you've done? Because there have been so many people that have gone through AAW now, and maybe people don't realize that and realize the, the level of matches that have taken place over the last couple of years. It, it's something where I looked uh, four years ago, we had a show with about 50 people on it, and about 40 of them went through WWE or AEW uh, or are there currently right now. So it's really, we've grown a lot. And you can see all our live shows, all our old shows on AEW On Demand, and also check it out on the High Spots Video Network. And then also check out YouTube. Our YouTube channel has been posting a lot of stuff. We recently put out a reaction show, which has all the major storylines and promos and vignettes for the show that's coming on tonight. And we'll be doing that shortly after tonight's show for the show that we got coming up during All Out Weekend because, of course, Chicago needs to sell more wrestling tickets. Which match tonight's going to steal the show, Keith? Uh, I There is a potential Hoss battle that I'm looking forward to that will be announced at the show uh, featuring multiple men of big mass and plunder. Uh, I think the tag team title match with uh, Jossie, an incredible talker, a fantastic young uh, athlete from Minnesota, and uh, ACH versus Ace Perry and Hammerstone for the AEW Tag Team titles. I think that's going to be good. I'm curious about the main event. Right now we have uh, former champion Fred Yehi facing Manders earlier on in the show, and the winner of that match will face our heavyweight champion Matt Fitchett at the end of the night for the belt. So those, any of those matches could potentially steal a show. So I'm, I'm really looking forward. I think this is a really, really solid show, and I think anyone that's in Chicago that really hates rain and doesn't want to feel like going outside, come down to 115 Bourbon, get some 
uh, cheap drinks and enjoy some really, really good independent pro wrestling. You know, Keith, you've been uh, appearing on the show here and there since 2005. And in uh, 2005, if you ran a show, we'd be talking about where to get the videotape afterwards. And then uh, you lived through that era, and then you lived through the era where people were trying to stream, but it sucked, and it was a failure. And all people it talk still about. It sometimes sucks, though. It I mean, does, it's, but it's, I mean, it's, it's something where we had a, an issue two shows ago, where the stream was down for the majority of the show, and it's just like wow. you know, I, I really was. I had in my drafts of tweets, "How's the stream, everybody?" But I decided not to. Well, you know, it was it was so bad at one point that it was pretty much acknowledged streaming will never work. Like <laughs> it'll never work ever. <laughs> and then uh, I don't even know what happened, but like it was like over the course of a year. All of a sudden, streaming worked for everybody. It was the technology. The technology basically. Well, I mean, it play. was, but it wasn't People like knew what they were doing a little bit. Yeah, what, but it didn't seem like it was a slow thing. It was like all of a sudden, one day, streaming was just a failure for everybody, and then like the next day, everybody was streaming, and it worked out for the most part pretty well. And Is then it, everyone, everyone and their mother are streaming now. Yeah, like, I literally could have a show in this bathroom and have it on fight for five ninety nine. Well, so. I'm doing a show streaming right now from my bedroom, <laughs> look at, look at and that. you're in your bathroom. <laughs> Yeah. And it's somehow working. Book a bathroom with broadband. But anyway, really my, my point, because we have one minute left, is uh, has this has this turned around uh, the fortunes of AEW? Yes and no. I mean, it, it definitely allows us more uh, opportunity to get in people's houses, but at the same time, people have to give us a chance. I think there's really a lot of professional wrestling that people will get into right now, but it's sort of a, they have to sort of figure out what they like and what they don't like. So it's something where give AEW a try, give us twelve ninety five tonight on fight and we will give you a fantastic show and, uh, you know, hopefully you enjoy it and tell all your friends. All right, we're going to head to a break. When we come back, we'll uh, plug the show, everything else. Back in a moment, Observer Live. We're right on the show. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sibervivi, the doctor, Keith Lipinski. Tonight, July 15th, 115 Bourbon Street, Marionette Park, Illinois. It's AAW's Pro Wrestling Presents Independent Day. 6 o'clock p.m. doors, 6.45 in live taping, 7.30 bell time, front row sold out, front row stage sold out, second row stage sold out, low ticket warning for the second row, third row going quickly, general admission is available. Keith, what do we got coming up tonight? And where can you, you watch it if you're not in the show, area? Many, many matches. Definitely check it out. Uh, the main event, uh, our AEW heavyweight champion, uh, Matt Fitchett, will face the winner of Fed Yehai and the one called Manders earlier on the show. The women's championship will be decided. Also, the tag team titles with Jossie and ACH going for revenge against Hammerstone and Diamond Cut Ace Perry. We also have a humongous Haas fight, which I'm really looking forward to that I can't say that much about here because we have not announced it yet, but I'm giving you guys a little bit of the scoop. So much more action here. We have a mystery tag team partner match with Brayden Lee and a partner of his choosing versus Silas Young and a partner of his choosing. That and really so much more. You definitely have to check it out. Watch it on Fight TV. Support us. Uh, follow us on AEW Pro. We'll be doing tons of promos and videos tonight. Follow us on the Twitter. Follow us on the Instagram and everything else. And definitely continue to support independent pro wrestling because we love you. My God, what a professional old Dr. Keith is. Well, I want to thank you for doing the show today, and we'll do this again this, sometime. This is how old Dr. Keith is, too. There was a newsletter that Brian used to, that, that Brian used to have. Did you see all those special thanks? Hey, yeah. Oh, he's in there for the special thanks? Wow. Yeah. I think I put him in there every single week without fail just because he was so, so loyal. Is that right, Keith? I was very, very loyal. Like, remember when Mike and I took over the Flying Mare for a while, and it just... Uh, the quality went down quickly. Yeah, it, it didn't Time fly it. anymore after that. It was just the mayor. <laughs> it was just the mayor. He called it. <laughs> anyway, we're out of time. Want to thank you all for listening today. Mike, as always, callers, listeners, Dr. Keith. I'll talk to you again next time. Wrestling Observer Live.